really good to have you with me today. Uh, doing a special, just a short program for YouTube. And uh, but before I get into it, let me let me just hit this button to show you where we're at. And uh, so if you you want to get in touch, Hidden Meanings Post Office Box five six nine, Forked River, New Jersey, zero eight seven three one. And the website www.hiddenmeanings.com and my email is bdona91078 2000 at yahoo.com. What I wanted to do was just spend a few minutes and try to take a look at the Bible, maybe in a, in a different way. You know, I, I've done this a uh, long time ago, but a lot of the, I get a lot of mail from people on YouTube, and you know, it, it seems as though many of you have never heard some of the things I've done before. And and this goes back to the really basics of the Bible. Can, can we somehow uh, approach the Bible from a standpoint of common sense? You know, there there was a um, Jewish theologian by the name of Moses Maimonides back from the um, Middle Ages. And he was a brilliant guy. And he said, whenever you see something in the Bible that, you know, really goes against your common sense, then stop there because the Scripture is trying to show you something very important. And, and, and this is what I think we've missed. We, we've never acknowledged that the Bible is Greek mythology, which it is. It was written in Alexandria, Egypt in about 350 B.C., both the Old and New Testament. And even, even the Bible as we read it says, be not a minister of the letter. You can't take this stuff literally. Now, if you want to approach the Bible from a common sense standpoint, can you do it by taking mythology literally? And the answer to that is no. So let's go back to probably the earliest story back in Genesis and see if, if, if we can make common sense out of this. And the story goes that God took a rib out of Adam and made Eve. Right away, just ask yourself, does that make sense to me? Does that seem to be common sense? You're going to say, oh, well, God can do anything he wants, but you know that's not the way creation is. It's cosmic. It, it's subatomic. It's electrical. It's atomic. Now, if you look at the Adam and Eve story, the interesting part is the beginning of it really is Genesis 5, where it talks about saying God created human beings, people, male and female, and he called their name Adam. He didn't call them Adam and Eve. He called male and female Adam. Well, wouldn't that kind of suggest to you that maybe it's talking about A-T-O-M instead of A-D-A-M? Aha. Uh -huh. But if it is Adam, A-T-O-M, right away we're involved because that's what we are. I mean, we, we're all atoms. We're made of Adam. So we're all atoms, just like it says. And then we go back to the story then of the Adam and Eve part. So now we've got all the atoms, and we've got this God not taking a rib, but what say we take an electron out of Adam, A-T-O-M? We'll, we'll call that electron the rib. We take an, ad, uh, an electron out of an atom, and we've created a positive ion. We take that electron that we remove from that atom, 
we put it in another atom, and we've created a negative ion. It's called ionic bonding, and the two bond. The two become as one, and we've created male and female, positive, negative, Adam and Eve. And voila, the story makes sense because what it was really telling us is that all life began with the splitting of the atom. Do you see? Do you see? Where if you, you, you don't take these stories literally, but you, you look at them and say, now, let me, let me use my common sense. I mean, you know, the same creator gave us a brain. And, and, and you know, you say, well, why didn't they just say that in the beginning? And I'll tell you why. When the stories were originally written, of course, the human mind brain had not advanced to the uh, point of uh, evolving to, into the realm of science so that people would understand uh, talking about atoms and, and, and ionic bonds and things like that. But this way, by placing that in the text, when the uh, race of humans had finally reached that point of evolving in intelligence scientifically, not only would they know that this was the story of creation, ionic bond, the splitting of the atom, but on top of that, we would know somebody wrote this thousands of years ago and was obviously thousands of years ahead of their time. So, all of a sudden, we take one of the very early stories of the Bible, probably the earliest, and it becomes true. Life did begin with the splitting of the atom, with ionic bonding, with, with creation of positive, negative. And, and now we can sit and say, hey, this is scientifically correct. Well, what do you think? <laughs> That's, that's where I started many years ago. What I'd like to do in this next session of um, what we would call the Bible and common sense, what I would like to do is uh, take a look at Moses and the burning bush. Remember that one? You think he was really talking to a bush that was on fire? Or do you think might mean something else. Well, I got news for you. It sure does. And if you look at these scriptures, you'll find out, wow, you know what? These things were scientifically correct and were written on the basis of the Greek classic science who knew these things thousands of years ago because they're from another bunch too. And we'll get to that one day down the road. So what have we done? We've got Adam and Eve, and we've turned it into splitting the atom and ionic bonding, and we can now judge the story to be correct. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. Okay, thanks for being with me. Tune back in, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that story of uh, Moses and the burning bush and uh, see what that's really all about. Here's the address again. We'll see you soon.